Lesson 5. Maximise your screen time. Sometimes reducing one's mood is an active process. More often it is essentially passive, a matter of not doing things. The question, of course, is what to do instead. Simply sitting still is boring and hard to maintain. Mindfulness meditation may make you less miserable rather than more. You need an alternative. Fortunately, vast media industries have arisen to help occupy your mind while time slips away. Consider television. The citizens of most Western countries spend significantly more time watching their screens than interacting with their partners, friends or children. Smoking, it is said, shrinks the average person's life expectancy by 10 years. But why stop there? Spending 34 hours per week watching television, the United States average, will occupy fully 30% of your waking hours, 23 years of the average person's conscious lifespan. This sounds intolerably dull, but viewing can become habitual, nibbling away at your life until you believe wholeheartedly that you do not have time for any of the things that might lift your mood, learning, reading, exercising, contributing to your community, seeing friends and family, cooking, or cultivating your interests and hobbies. If you spend eight hours a night in bed, you have 112 waking hours a week. Spend 34 of them watching television, and you still have 78 hours left that might inadvertently improve your life satisfaction. If you cannot bear another reality show, an alternative readily presents itself. The internet. The average American use... The average American usage is 26 hours per week or higher, depending on the study. Most surveys explicitly exclude internet usage that is a part of paid employment, so the vast majority of these hours are voluntary. How should you spend your time online? Surely you do not need advice on this front, but here are some options. Read the news in endless and irrelevant detail. Tell yourself you're enriching your life by learning about Belgian political sex scandals. Update social media with important information about your life, what you had for lunch, the flu symptoms you had yesterday, and share the adorable cat video someone posted earlier. Surf randomly from page to page, chasing forgotten tidbits of information, like the names of cast members from Eight is Enough, or the date that Dinal was first patented. Watch video ephemera, like off-duty marine unit demonstrates twerking to Britney hit. And out-of-work actor creates claymation comedy using spray cheese. Marvel at, and add to, the inane and misspelled commentary on all of the above. And come on, much, much more. Now then, 52 hours a week remain. How about computer gaming? Now a bigger money maker than the film industry, gaming occupies an average of 13 hours a week for Americans 12 to 24 years of age. Extreme gamers about 4% of the gaming population, spend 48 or more hours per week. Gaming is growing in popularity, and larger game design firms employ experts whose primary role is to figure out how to get more women, young children, and older people to spend their lives shooting at other people's online avatars. Many people would not accept a job with such long hours as hardcore gamers are willing to put in. At one point, it was believed that newer media would simply supplement older forms of electronic entertainment, taking over the time that people used to spend staring at Bewitched. But no. Television watching has remained relatively robust, particularly if one includes the viewing of the same programmes online. Gaming and the internet have not eaten television. They have instead consumed people's social lives, shared meals, and time spent out of doors. In Canada, spaces at limited access wilderness areas are easier to get each year perhaps because it is so difficult to play World of Warcraft in a canoe. Total it up. 52 hours minus 13 makes 39 hours. Add a job, and we have successfully eliminated all unpaid conscious hours from your life. Is there a risk of fulfilment here? Apparently not. There are no studies indicating that gaming, internet surfing, or television are, on balance, mood improvers. To walk the path of misery, it turns out that walking isn't required at all. One must merely sit, spellbound, before a flickering screen that feels so important, so encompassing, that you simply do not have space in your life for anything else. Take some time to calculate your weekly leisure screen time ratio. It's easy to do. Simply add up your screen time, 
television, plus non-work internet, plus gaming, all divided by your hours of unpaid consciousness, 168 hours in a week, minus the hours you spend in bed or at work. Let's say you watch television three hours a day, surf 2.5 hours a day, spend two hours a week playing computer solitaire, lie in bed eight hours a day, and work 40 hours a week. This amounts to three times seven plus 2.5 times seven plus two, 168 minus eight times seven plus 40 equals 40.5 hours of screen time, divided by 72 non-work waking hours, which equals 0.0563 or 56.3% of leisure time spent on screens. Not bad. But this still leaves you with 31.5 hours a week of non-screen leisure. Bump up your television and internet just to the US average and this will give you 62 hours, leaving virtually no time for anything at all that might inadvertently boost your mood. What could be easier?